that we mastered shapes, fonts, and the pen tool. Uh, we're going to see how we can work with uh, images and photography and Illustrator. So we usually associate images and uh, with Photoshop. And that's right, you're supposed to edit and uh, photos in Photoshop, get the lighting correct, get the, uh, the contrast right, and get the color profile right. Once you do that and you save it as a JPEG, this is how you kind of incorporate it into your designs in Illustrator. Um, so for this case, let's go ahead and open up a new document. Let's do an 8.5 by 11 flyer. Let's go ahead and click OK. And we have our uh, artboard here, 8.5 by 11 flyer. Let's go ahead and minimize this. These are the three photos I'm going to use for this example. Uh, so let me just pick this first one here. Let's see what we have. And I use a great uh, website called Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S.com, and you can find some free stock photography. If I open up this, you can kind of see a wide variety of free uh, stock photography you can use. Um, so this is an excellent resource if you do not have the funds to purchase expensive stock photos. Uh, of course, you have to adhere to any kind of copyright that they may have. Um, let's go ahead and open up this in Illustrator. Okay, so when you open up a document in Illustrator, it's going to open it up in its own window and usually super large. So what I like to do is I have my trackpad. Of course, you may have to do it manually down here if you're on a Windows or not on a laptop with the trackpad. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so I can see my photo. And I have multiple windows here. So let's go ahead and drag my photo over to my main ad. And of course, you may have to hold down Shift click and you're going to make it smaller and it's not it's going to scale it perfectly if I was to just go ahead and click this and drag uh, it's going to get distorted so let's go ahead and do command Z let's go back in time and let's hold down shift and then I'm able to kind of scale it perfectly so let's say I want to create an ad here so we can um, uh, have this photo here we can also do another photo let's do the same thing again Let's bring in a different photo. Let's bring in this lady right here. Let's go ahead and open it up. Okay, let's go ahead and drag it over to our artboard. It's always super large. So we can actually have two photos here. And it doesn't have, it can go, it, ex, it can extend outside of the artboard. Nothing when you export it as a PDF or a JPEG, nothing outside of the artboard is ever going to be seen. This is just for your eyes. So if you wanted to crop this photo and drag it out just like this, anything on the outside, don't worry about it. This is really your artwork right here. Uh, so don't worry about anything that's extended outwards. Uh, so let's, let's move this photo to the side. I really like this photo. And what I like about this photo, it's got this nice solid background. Let's go ahead and hold down shift and bring it to the entirety of the artboard up here. Okay. And another thing I like to do, kind of just a quick trick, is I can take our rectangle square tool, make it a white filling, which is the same as the artboard background. I like to draw a box here, and then here, kind of cut that off visually so that I'm not seeing it. So it kind of helps me um, frame my, my flyer here. So we're going to take what we use for text, and we're going to do headline goes here. Let's do that railway font we used in the last video. Let's do black. Make that bigger. Let's kind of do, instead of black, let's kind of do a light, a kind of a medium gray. That, that'll go really nicely with the, the light gray background. So with photos, um, let's also bring in another photo. Let's bring in this uh, lady right here. So as you can see with layering, she's stuck on the very back of layer. Um, so one way we can bring her to the front is to right click, arrange, bring to front. And that's going to take a little bit of time to get used to bringing things in the back, bringing things in the front. So let's bring this image out to the front. And you notice it covers everything else up. I'm just doing this kind of to show you how to do that again. So let's bring that to the back. Let's say I want to have this lady as the main photo. Um, so let's say I want to crop this lady so she's not as wide. How do we do that? So let's draw a box. Uh, we're going to take our shape tool and we're going to draw a box. Let's go ahead and make this um, a color so we can see it. 
and switch it to stroke. So now when I make my box, you'll just see the line and a transparent inside. Let's say I just want to really want to focus in on our eyes. Now I want to make it more of a square cropping instead of a horizontal image. So that's really the photo I want to see. I don't want any of the stuff outside of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this box, and then I'm going to click on the photo behind it, and here's the trick. You're going to right click, and you're going to make what's called a clipping mask. And this is a great way to basically crop photos to the size that you want. So when I say make clipping mask, it's going to take that one box and just show the photo within that box. So now I just see her eyes. So I can move her down here and have her as a pop-out box. Um, so right now, you can't really see uh, her image popping out very much. Um, I was going to have maybe a call-out text down here below, maybe make her a little bit smaller. Um, so let's go ahead and add a drop shadow. That will kind of help this little image pop out away from the background layer. Um, so how do you add a drop shadow? Well, let's go ahead and click this, go to Effect, and we're going to go to Stylize and then Drop Shadow. Drop Shadow is probably one of the most widely used tools that I use to help with layering and, and perspective. Just click, uh, I like to click on Preview to see kind of the effects that my shadow will have. Opacity, 100% is going to be 100% shown and zero is going to be basically nothing. Um, so sometimes I like to do something in between, like 50% where the sh Drop Shadow is not as strong. Um, you can see how it lightened a little bit, uh, but it's, it's more subtle, which is definitely in right now. On trend is a subtle, subtle um, drop shadow. Uh, this is the off, off, um, offset from the x-axis and the y-axis. Just kind of play around with this. Sometimes I have to manually add 0 0.01 because that's very, very little distance. Um, so the shadow is going to be closer to the photo instead of way showing, off, showing up way past the photo. And blurring, you can either have no blurring, so you'll um, see a dramatic showing of the drop shadow, or you can add a little blurring to make it blend in much nicer. So let's change this back to 0, 1, 0, 1. And don't worry about mode, it's usually default multiply, or you can set it on normal. Uh, don't worry about that at this moment. You go ahead and click OK. Of course, you can change the coloring of the drop shadow. I almost always keep it as black, but there are situations where you change it. So you notice that little drop shadow kind, kind of adds a nice layered effect to it. So let's go ahead and crop other images just to kind of show you an example. Let's um, crop her so you just see in her face. So let's take the Shapes tool. Let's go ahead and hold Shift so we get a perfect square. Let's just get her face. That's a great cropping right there. And if you want to change the color on this fill and then switch it to a, um, a stroke so you can kind of see the outline of what's going to be cropped, you can do that. Uh, too much to the left. Let's do this right here. That's perfect. Okay, so then we're going to select our um, square here, or square shape. Then we're going to hold shift. And so we're selecting both of these objects. We're selecting the square and we're selecting the image in the background, we're going to right click and we're going to make a clipping mask. It's going to clip it to that shape. And so here's her. And let's go ahead and add that drop shadow. If you've already set the drop shadow on a previous image, which is what we just did, you can uh, cheat and do right click. Actually, let's go back and do it. You go up to effect and drop shadow is already in the memory from us doing it before. So it's going to do, keep the same settings that we've already set. Click Preview, and then OK. And so now that's added a really nice, subtle drop shadow. Um, let's go ahead and make her bigger. Okay, so you can kind of see how you can crop and add images. I think I have one more image here. Let's check it out. Let's go ahead and bring this one in. We can also um, make images black and white in Illustrator, but I don't recommend it because it's a lot better to do any kind of coloring and photo editing in Photoshop. If I were to right click, uh, let's see, go to Object, um, Edit Colors, and if I were to convert this to grayscale, it does an okay job, but Photoshop does a much more 
uh, a much better job at converting to black and white than Illustrator does. So leave Illustrator for cropping, drop shadow, and laying out of the photos. Don't really use it for any kind of editing of colors. Leave that for Photoshop. Uh, so let's go Command Z. Let's go back in time. We have our photo right here. Let's put her in the background. So to put her in the very back of all these photos, she's in the front right now because we just put her in. So let's go ahead and click on this image, right click, arrange, and send to the back. So now you can see her in the background hanging out. And kind of shift these around. So let's kind of make this uh, a nice curve. Let's do a big circle. Let's zoom out and let's do our shapes tool. Let's make a circle right here. Let's make this a different color so you can see what we're doing here. Make this a stroke. And let's increase the weight so you can kind of see our outline a little better. So now let's say I want to add this nice curvature to this yellow photo. So let's crop it. So we're going to select first the pink uh, circle here. Then we're going to hold down shift and select that background photo. So now both are selected. We're going to right click and make clipping mask. And now when you make a clipping mask, sometimes it brings the object forward to the topmost layer. So all we have to do is right click and send it right back to the back again. And so you notice how it made a nice rounded cropping there. And you can do the same thing with this as well. So let's say I no longer like the cropping on this. I want to change this to a circle since we're kind of having this circular theme. So how do I get rid of the cropping? Well, let's click on this photo, we're going to right click, and we're going to release the clipping mask. It's going to basically revert us back to our original um, photo. Uh, so let's do a perfect circle. So we're going to select circle, hold down shift, let's just do a face. And now that we have that object selected, let's select the photo we want to crop, right click, make clipping mask. And I'm going to take these little objects and bring them to the front to kind of cover our new elements that have risen to the top. And so let's add that drop shadow. We go stylize drop shadow. Okay, we have it on preview. Let's make it more dramatic. Let's make it darker. So we're going to increase the number there to make it darker. And let's hmm. Let's actually make it a little subtle. Actually, let's do 44. Press OK. And so you can kind of see some things coming together. Let's say I wanted to kind of add a little a different color here. Do pink, right click, send that back. I'm going to put a little border there. Or I'm going to take the image and add a stroke to it. And increase the weight. So you can add like a little circular border to that circle. And that green looks awful. Let's do a nice blue. So there, we have like a nice border to our curvature. That was just selecting the photo and adding a stroke. You can do that with any, any photo. Um, so a lot of times you'll see circle photos and you'll see maybe like a white border. Let's do like an off-white, just a little bit gray. Okay. And we're going to increase the weight. And so we were able to add this kind of nice, subtle um, border there. Let's go ahead and make that six. See if we can make that a little bolder. See? You can kind of see how you're playing around um, with this. Great. Just kind of messing around with photos. Of course, this is probably too many photos for an ad, but this is just kind of an example of how to do it. Let's make this a little darker. Make this white. And there you go. Let's say I don't want the circle anymore. You release your clipping mask and start all over again with a new cropping. Or you can drag her and have her be the only piece, the only photo. And go ahead and get rid of all this stuff. And then you can have a, a nice clean ad that way. So yeah, Illustrator is not meant to uh, for photo editing, but, it, but you can do some nice cropping work and set your photos up um, nicely and create ads in Illustrator. So if you need to do any kind of photo work, I'm going to have a separate Photoshop class that will go over editing and how to make these images really look awesome. Um, so thank you.